right, so what have, what have you got here? Okay, so um, what we're, we're interested in doing is we want to transfer large amounts of power over a usable distance, and we want to do it safely and efficiently. So we want to try and do everything, but of course, we, we, we can't necessarily get all everything we want. Um, so we're going to use magnetic fields, and we're going to transfer energy from the, this coil, this red layer is over here, to this resonant structure over here. Um, we're going to look at ranges of about two to three feet. Um, and the nice key thing here is that we're going to have constant efficiency, and then it's going to start falling off. If we think about inductively coupled, like your sonic hair toothbrush, right? You plug that in, um, that actually falls off exponentially. So we have this nice little regime here of constant efficiency that we can play with. So I'll, I'll light this guy up here. And it's going to take a little bit for this light bulb to warm up. Um, light bulb's impedance actually changes as it gets hot. Um, so go for a second. So the key here is that we're using resonant structures. So just like a, a singer can shatter a glass, right? So her vocal cords uh, would resonate at a certain frequency, and at the same frequency the glass will resonate, and then there'll be enough energy transfer to shatter the glass. So that's exactly what's happening here. We have these resonant structures. They're going to transfer en efficiency, energy, sorry, efficiently back and forth between them. Um, you know, it would be nice. We don't, we don't want, because magnetic field doesn't necessarily affect the, the body, we can transfer the magnetic field through objects. So I can put this piece of plastic in between them. Um, you know, one of the things you think about is like, well, magnetic energy is not going to go through metal. Uh, it doesn't necessarily have to. So I can put this in between. The light bulb doesn't noticeably dim. What's happening is that the magnetic fields go around. Right? So we just need to get X amount of flux lines through that device to be able to power the light bulb. So that's the interesting thing. Of course, if you put it all on the Faraday cage, you know, it's going to be out. <laughs> So is there any way to extend the range? So that's what we're working on. Um, I think there's certainly lots of key tricks and we're, we're going to publish later this year on the, those key tricks. Yeah. W what happens if you turn that to the side? Yeah. Like, so, you know, there, there are um, orientation things you can do. Um, and that's just part of the optimization of the system as a whole is how to figure out, you know, if I get good power here, I'm at 45 degrees, but, you know, what are the best usage models are yeah. of, of this technology? Now, could you bounce the field off of something else and send it to that after you turn it? Oh, yeah. Um, I'm going to show that later this year. Okay. Um, so. All right. All right. Well, thanks very much. Yep.